What's up everyone? Duran Torres, School of Chrome Guide Service and SOC Jigs. Today I'm going to tie a fire orange and red bugger jig for you. Um, this one's tied on a one-aught owner hook um, with a quarter ounce black jig head. I also tie it on an eighth ounce black jig head. Um, it's also got rubber legs, a little bit of uh, crystal flash in there, and some astaz fiber in the body. Awesome, awesome jig. Here we go. your jig locked in the vise. Start your thread, work your way back to your thread. It's just in front of the point of the hook. For any beginning fly tires um, out there, one tip I can give you guys uh, that took me a little while to learn, but <clears throat> excuse me, one tip I can give you is when you measure things, when you measure your materials and you put your materials on, the best way to to make a fly look good or jig look good is to have your proportions correct which means make sure you measure everything off of the length of your hook so you can measure things from the entire length of the hook half the length of the hook measure to the the tip of the hook point and up okay all your proportions need to come straight from the size of your hook which is going to make everything uh, when your jig is done or your fly is done it's going to make it look um, better better fit for itself it's going to make it look proportioned correctly so to start off um, I'm going to get some fire orange marabou two pieces of marabou and I'm going to line the tips up on jigs I like to use two pieces in the tail it just makes the tail look more full so I line the tips up Move them around until you get them to where you want them. And this is where I'm talking about measuring with your proportions. So I'm going to make this tail the, the same length as uh, my hook. So I measure from the tip of the jig head to the bend of the hook. And I pinch it off. And that's where I call my <clears throat> length of my tail. Switch hands and I'm going to do three wraps. Um, these are called pinch wraps, which means... You put a little loop up in your thread, you pinch it with your fingers, and you tighten it back down. I'm going to do three of those, and each time I do a pinch wrap, I'm going to increase the tension on my thread. I'm not trying to break the thread, you're not trying to get crazy. All you're trying to do right there is to get your, your marabou stuck on your hook shank. And then when you move to trim your excess off, I like to move and trim my excess right to the base of the jig head because I'm going to wrap this thread up the body and it's going to fill in this body so it's not so skinny. Okay, I'm going to go down and back a couple times. Each time I go down and back, I wrap closer and closer together and I put a little bit more tension each time. Okay. So then you have your tail, you have um, a body that's filled in a little bit more, and next we're going to move to a little bit of this Crystal Flash. You can use Crystal Flash Marabou, or excuse me, Crystal Flash um, Flashaboo, anything. It's not, I don't want this, this jig is not meant to be super flashy. Um, it's meant just to have a little bit of flash in there. So I'm taking three strands of this Crystal Flash, and I'm going to tie these in on the side. So the first one. I'm going to tie it in on the back side. Okay. Two wraps in there just to get it down. I'll fold the rest of my tag in over toward the front side. Two wraps just to get it secured so you have a little bit of flash on each side of your tail. Trim your tail off. When, and here's another tip for beginners when you're trimming things, don't, for the most part, uh, don't trim at straight angles like this. You always want to trim materials that are flowing backwards in your fly or your jig off at different angles, and it's just going to make it flow uh, more naturally in the water as opposed to being blunt. So never this way. Always take your scissors and just cut them off at an angle. Just kind of chop them wherever they go, and I want mine slightly longer, about a half inch longer than my tail. Next, we're going to tie in 
red staz fiber. It's from Spirit River. I pick a little bit off of the end and there's like a little thread cord that holds it all together. And I'm going to tie that in from the tip and it's basically going to be like you're wrapping a hackle. Make a few wraps to get that secured in there. Pull everything back and I'm going to bring my thread to the front. Okay. Next, um, when you wrap this fiber, just like you're wrapping a hackle, this fiber can move. You can pinch it and you can pull it. Okay, So when you're wrapping, uh, you want to pinch your fiber and pull it backwards. Okay, Every wrap, you wrap and you can pull it, peel it back. Wrap another one, peel it back. And you do this all the way up. Until you get to the jig head. And the reason why you're peeling this back just like with a hackle or with feathers or if you're tying composite loops is because you don't want your thread uh, or your cord that's in here that's holding it together you don't want it to lay over on top of the fibers and mash everything down you want the fibers to be up which makes this fly more buggy which is why it's called a bugger. Okay keep pinching back peeling pinching back you can see sometimes they like to fold forward if you don't get them all, it's not the end of the world. Just want to do, do your best and get the most you can. Okay, one more wrap so that, that that fiber is really pushed up against the head of the jig. And I'm gonna tie this off, and this is how I tie off my 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 fibers, or if I tie off my hackles, or anything I'm tying off in the front. I'll do two wraps straight down on it. I'll fold my tag end over. I'll do a handful of wraps in front, and then I go two, three, four wraps behind and some more in front. So you're just going to kind of alternate back and forth, back and forth on each side of this tag end before you trim it off. And I believe it just it just helps uh, get that tag end really secure, secured down, especially on jigs. Um, if you're getting down there by the rocks or if you're beating them up pretty good, you want those things to be really tied in securely. Okay. Uh, before I tie the last piece of my rubber legs, I like to give just a few wraps toward the head just to kind of get that secured down and get the, a little base for your for your rubber legs. These are black rubber legs. Um, they have little red specks in them. I just like the black. Um, I've also used black flex floss and a bunch of other different types of black legs as long as they're dark and they're black and they match with what you like. Okay, Each side of this jig head is going to get two rubber legs. You don't need a lot in here. We already got a lot of movement with the marabou and the flash or the crystal flash. Take your two rubber legs and I like to turn my vise so I'm tying and I'm looking straight down on my rubber legs. Three wraps. Start off when you tie rubber legs, start off with a really light wrap, increase the tension, increase the tension as you go. If you tie them too hard right away, if you put way too much tension right away, you're going to see that you're going to cut through your rubber legs. Okay, they're not, they're durable, but they're not the most durable when you're trying to tie, um, tie them on with thread. So lightly wrap it to get it to where you want. A little bit more tension, a little bit more tension. Okay, got my rubber legs, and I'm going to peel them up here, and I'm going to trim these off. I don't want them flowing all the way back. I don't want everything um, on my jigs or on my flies. I don't want everything to be the exact same length um, when you get to it. You always want things to be different lengths, and it makes things move differently in the water, and it also gives um, different contrast to your jig. So you got you don't have everything lined up here where everything's going to end in the exact same way. There's going to be more contrast between your black rubber legs and your fire orange tail if these legs are cut off a little bit shorter when they move okay so same thing I'm not gonna make these these rubber legs blunt I'm gonna come at them with an angle and I want them to I want them to end somewhere uh, be about halfway um, halfway in my tail right here so I'm just gonna it's not perfect science but I just want it at an angle trim them off okay and that's how they end up so then you'll go through and <clears throat> Trim off these little tag ends of your rubber legs. Okay. Last thing, peel everything back, and you're going to want to put a, a pretty good little head on this jig. Um, 
Just keep wrapping thread back and forth, back and forth, and evenly build up your head to where you want it. I don't like my jig, the, the thread heads on my jigs to be huge. I like it just enough so it covers all of my tag ends and all my rubber legs. As soon as I got it to where I want it, I whip finish. And when I whip finish, I do two separate whip finishes, four to five whips on the first one. And then, you know, five to ten on the second one. Trim off your excess. Head cement. <clears throat> in a dropper here. Love having my head cement in a dropper. You don't waste nearly as much. And it's really, really easy to get it into small, tight spaces as opposed to a brush. Okay. And that's it.